blaming the title. Yes, absolutely. And uh, what I love about Todd is that uh, he didn't make it here in London. So he's like, hey, you know what? I'll just go overseas. I'll go over to the States. And uh, yeah, and evidently he did so well there. I think playing Drampa Garbador over there. So Garbador is a deck that he's uh, very familiar with. Uh, here we have him playing uh, Golisopod Garbador. So something very, very similar. Um, is it Golisopod or is it Zoro? So, beg your pardon. He's playing Zoroark, uh, Golisopod. Uh, but again, a very, very experienced player and uh, one that a lot of people know within the community. Yeah, we've heard it just from Robin when he was interviewed by Joe. So both of them, of course, being very good friends. And Robin said that he had the list from Todd. So that means you are going to see <laughs> Robin and Todd navigating the exact same deck list. And here you can see Igor Costa. I think you're familiar with this face. Igor is running a decision based deck together with Zorak GX. Absolutely. And again, you have probably seen, if you've been watching the stream over the course of today, you have seen this Decidueye Zoroark deck. And I mean, this is something that us casters had no idea would feature over the course of the weekend. But here it is. This is uh, Decidueye Zoroark, uh, which has great synergy with each other. So obviously you have Zoroark for its trade ability, which allows you to set up those Decidueyes. And once you get those Decidueyes out, you have Feather Arrow, which places the damage all across your opponent's side of the boards. And yeah, I mean, it's just a, such a powerful deck. And uh, again, we have two very, very well-known established players, champions, should we say, in their own rights. Uh, so it was impossible not to feature this match for you. Oh, this is just an amazing match. This could have been very well also the final on Sunday. No one would have right. complained if we said this is going to be the final, <laughs> right? And so we are able to feature this to you right now. So every single turn, every single round that we are going to feature, we are going to have two big names facing each other. Absolutely. And I think they've just done the dice roll there. So um, they're just about setting up. Um, just trying to see what's going on here at the moment. I think Todd might have a mulligan, I'm not too sure. Um, but uh, they are just setting up at the moment. Having a look at Igor's hand, I'm just thinking, trying to have a look what he's opened up with. I think he had a Rowlet in the active spot. Uh, Todd there setting up as well. Uh, they have just done the dice roll and we should be getting on uh, with the game very, very shortly for you. Yeah, they're not giving away anything here for free as they are placing their prize cards and we can see them already in the prize cam. So we can see that on uh, Todd's side there, there's a Wimpart, there's also a Zorak GX and another Zora. So nothing too much to worry about as he's playing so many copies of these and the Decidueye uh, took double colors energy. That's wow. quite hurting for Igor here. Yeah, two double colors could be pretty pivotal, especially when your Zoroark relies on uh, having that one energy attachment to um, to attack with uh, the Riotous beating. So that could come back to maybe, you know, haunt uh, Igor here. But, I mean, you know, he doesn't rely on that so much. It's more the Feather Arrows that he's relying on. But uh, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, we were hoping for a very close match here and we're looking forward to it. I hope we, you are looking forward as well as the players are just waiting for the sign uh, to get started, to extend the hand and get going. As you can see, Todd is featuring <laughs> his nice, cuddly uh, Celebi here. He needs it probably as a good luck charm. Absolutely. And it's always great having those good luck charms. And, and oh, it's gone. David <laughs> <laughs> just, said, just said, no, sorry, I can't have that on the table. So there goes your good luck charm, uh, Todd. But yeah. uh, clear this <laughs> policy, the handshake. Here we go. It's round number seven for you guys. We are up and running. And Todd is going first. So it uh, opens up with the Tapu Coco, which is probably... Uh, uh, one of the ideal starters within the game just because it has that free retreat so it gives you so much versatility as to what you want to change into yeah i just saw uh, todd was going to slam that ace roller on the table <laughs> of course he doesn't want to play that he's smiling of course he thought there was another lady in that case bridget but he has access to it don't worry about it here's tapu lele and would be very much uh, confused if it wasn't for bridget here sure and he is going for the bridget you can see because he's put that in the front of the deck. But the reason why he hasn't just taken it up and uh, taken the Pokemon he wants out immediately uh, with that wand attack ability, of course, is because he is doing a very brief deck check to try and work out what's prized within his deck. Um, he's trying to just look for the, a lot of the, the important resources and work out, hey, like how many Golisopods do I have um, in the deck? How many Zoroarks do I have in the deck? How many Double Colors Energies do I have in the deck? And that's kind of what he's using this time for. And you are allowed an extended time for your first deck check uh, to make those checks and try and work out what is prized. Yeah, there you go. There's a Mr. Mime, there's a Zorua, and there's a Wimpar. That's probably what he's uh, eyeing out. And there we go, slamming those three cards onto the table for Todd there. So Bridget working well again in round number one for this deck. 
Absolutely. And uh, again, what's so great about this is that ta the Tapu Koko can retreat for free, so it can go into any one of these Pokemon. Um, on top of that as well, um, you know, when he evolves into the Glycopods, he'll be able to use uh, First Impression, which will be able to do the, the 120 damage, which is, you know, is a, such a solid way of starting. And um, I mean, really, you always kind of want to go first with Evolution decks. So Tord has been fortunate enough that he is able to go first, which means he'll be able to attack much sooner than Igor will be. Yeah, Igor looks excited about this, so uh, <laughs> here we go, there's a uh, Grass Energy attached to the Wimpart, and it looks like a very strong turn one for Todd already, and this is why he's passing, that's it, and let's see what Igor can do with his hand. Sure, uh, Bridget, oh wow, didn't even use Tapu Lele, just uh, didn't need to use the, the Wonder Tag, just went for the Bridget, and uh, yeah, he is opening up with the Bridget again, doing a deck check as well, just trying to work out what's prized. Um, Hopefully, he w uh, he isn't too upset when he finds out he's got two double colors energy prized. But he is still going through the deck. Um, you can see Igor there. Actually, he's got a pen on the side. So he's just making some mental notes, uh, writing them down on the piece of paper, just to kind of give him some sort of uh, some pointers for later in the game. Yeah, I think this is exactly what he's doing right now. He wants to make sure that he can remember what he's looking for in case he's uh, not having access to another card that uh, allows him to look through his deck. Bridget, interestingly enough, he uh, only features one of these copies. So we can see there's already a big difference in these um, decks and how they approach it. There's also a uh, Zorak feature, of course, and uh, Routed. So you would imagine Igor has the very same uh, goal, like Todd, playing Bridget in the very first turn. But he says, one Bridget is enough for me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, obviously, the issue is that if that one Bridget does get prized, that can be a bit detrimental. But uh, in this case, it's been absolutely fine. It's uh, He's managed to search it out. Or oh, it didn't even search it out. He just had it in his hand from his opening hand. Um, but over to Todd, he goes into Zoroark GX, which is pretty big, uh, just because now he has that ability to use trade. Um, so that is going to add a lot more consistency to his deck. Um, Todd is using Ultra Ball here. Um, just having a look what he searches. Does he... I think he had a Professor Sycamore in hand. Okay, so yes. that would make sense. So he's going for the Golisopod GX because obviously he will retreat that Tapu Koko and go for the first impression attack. Um, but in the meantime, I believe he's going to play Professor Sycamore and hit a fresh seven new cards. Yeah, he has a really strong hand. So Ultra Ball, uh, discarding those two cards, another Professor Sycamore uh, drawing himself seven fresh cards and slams <laughs> it on the table. No high five in this case. No but high five. He also has a Zora, so he has more draw engine. There's another Zora waiting yeah, to be crazy, evolved. Right? So this is amazing on top. Outside. Perfect start. Absolutely. Although it doesn't look like he's drawn into too much. I'm just trying to have a look at his hand. Um, wow. Um, that's a bit of a clump hand. He's got um, one Grass Energy. He's got a Wimpod in there, which he can't bench because he's got five Pokemon. A Field Blower. Um, he does have the the um, the trade. So he's going to use trade now. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. This kind of Field Blower get two more. <laughs> And uh, yeah, only <laughs> only watching the stream can you see these things. So um, yeah, I mean, the good news is is that because he has that Zoroark, um, well, he's going straight with the Zoroark to KO those Rowlets, uh, trying to prevent uh, Igor from getting as many Decidueyes into the game as possible. Um, but the good news is that even though he doesn't have a supporter in, in his hand, he's going to take a prize, and then he'll be able to use, uh, trade again next turn in an attempt to try and draw a supporter. But Igor opens up with uh, a very strong... Um, following turn, getting that Wreck Handy onto Decidueye and using Evo Soda to get Zoroark GX. Evo Soda is so important in this case because Igor, I don't think, had a uh, supporter card in his hand, but with the trade ability, he gets himself two more cards. So very important. It would have been a dry hand without a Zorak in his in his deck, but now he can discard something like, he, uh, for example, the Max Potion, which he doesn't need right now, or maybe the Dart Tricks because he evolved his Decidueye just now, and now hoping for a, a supporter card in the next two cards. Sure, and uh, one Rowlet just got knocked out. There's one Rowlet that's already been evolved. Another Rowlet is in the prize, um, in the prizes, in the prize zone. There's only one more Rowlet in the deck, so he. Oh, he's going for an N. So yeah, he might be pretty short of trying to get out more Decidueyes at this rate. Um, but the good news is he still has his Zoroax, which are you know viable attackers in themselves. Absolutely, and now the first uh, Feather Arrow can come out during this turn. Igor drawing six cards here toward five because he's picked up the first KO already. And we can see that the Zorak GX are piling up on the field. Absolutely, and uh, I'm just trying to think what would he target here with the Feather Arrow. Uh, Golisopod, oh, there's a Rowlet. So that might be his final Rowlet, I think. Um, yeah, I'm just having to think, because one got knocked out, uh, one's in the prizes, so... Maybe, maybe there's one more in the deck. I'm not too sure. Um, but at this point, with the Feather Arrow, 
what is he trying to target here? Would he, does he want to go after Zoroark in the active? Or is Golisopod the bigger threat at this point? It's really quite tricky to work out you know, what is the, the, the biggest threat from coming from Tor's side. In this case, it's uh, just a pass, if I saw that correctly. Oh, wow. So he has no energy in hand. Did he even use Feather Arrow? I think, yeah, there's no energy, but I think he missed out on the Feather, feather Arrow there. Wow. So Todd's turn now. I think he, he drew already. So uh, Todd now with another um, trade Trade? and uh, looking for that second Zorak GX on this side. He's playing four copies of these, so you would imagine him being able to draw into one uh, sooner or later. He has one prize, um, but he doesn't have his Ultra Ball, so uh, maybe he's digging for it with uh, another N sooner or later. Absolutely, and uh, one thing that Tor does go actually have going for him is that his deck is predominantly Stage 1s, Stage 1s and Basics. Wow. Wait a minute. Wow, okay, so <laughs> that's pretty big. That's pretty big, because now... Um, I might have to... It would be interesting to have a look through the discard pile and work out how many Rowlets are in there. Um, there is definitely one prize. There is um, one Evolves. That could be all the Rowlets. I think that might be his last Rowlet. I'm not too sure. We'll find uh, out soon as there's an Ultra Ball in Igor's hand. And for Igor, it's really, really grim right now. So he's discarding another Evo Solar because he has no targets for it anyway. So there's finally an energy. You need it last turn. Right. So now it's, it's very interesting to see what he's going to be investing in. Oh, no. Oh, there's wow. another trade. And I was thinking about, is he playing <laughs> Sycamore right now? Um, the issue is, obviously, with um, the energy, he needs to double colorless energy because... Well, I mean, he has to f start filling up this bench because that Zoroark is dependent. That Riotus beating uh, is dependent on how many Pokemon you have on the bench. And obviously, with um, not having that many Pokemon, that's, what, 40 damage tops? And if you had the choice band, that's 70, which is, I mean, it's kind of adding up numbers, uh, you know, with the Feather Arrow as well. But, okay, so Igor, you know, immediately recognizes this, which is why he's trying to get uh, more Pokemon onto his bench. He's gone for the Ultra Ball for the Zoroa. Um, but still, he can't attack without that double colorless energy. Yeah, he got the bad news right there as he noticed that there is no more routed in his deck. And now, because he only has access to a Grass Energy, he's not attaching it to any of the Zorak, but instead to one of the Decidui, preparing uh, potentially also an attack from it if he finds himself a double colorless. But we know two of them are priced, so Igor in a very tough situation. <laughs> it's very, very tough isn't it? Um, so he's uh, kind of restricted to Rowlets and he's restricted to double colors energies. Um, that doesn't make good showings for Igor at this moment in time. But we'll see what he draws from this end. Um, you know, he does really need this double colors energy because if he doesn't, he could be quite far behind at this rate. Um, oh, he's got it. He's got it in his hand. I think it was the first card that he drew. So he's got Floatstone. What would he retreat into though? Is he just playing that down to thin his hand size or... He might protect it from another attack and maybe throw up the uh, Zorua, but I'm not too sure what he's thinking about. So the double colorless energy will have to wait for one more turn. Now he's making use of the Feather Arrow, I believe, and he would target the Golisi part on the bench. So that's the first damage that is appearing on the field. But apart from that, I don't think Igor can deal more damage. Right, so I beg your pardon because I just remembered he has actually attached this turn. He attached the Grass Energy onto the, um, onto the Decidui. So one thing he might actually be thinking at this moment in time, which is why he was contemplating the Float Stone, was putting on the active Zoroark and then switching it down to the Decidueye which he can then use um, he can go for his GX attack in Halo Hunt and then return three cards in his discard pile back to his hand assumably his Rowlets yeah, he decides against it and passes it over to Todd who can still build up on uh, the pro uh, demanding uh, on the commanding uh, uh, field uh, that he has right wow. now so there's another Zorak GX hitting the field finally he finds himself the second copy now he has access to two trades here and he's still looking through his deck just to make sure that he knows what is left in there uh, yet again he has nothing to uh, worrying in the prize cards there's a Guzma maybe that he wants to make use of uh, later on um, but uh, Todd very much happy with the situation Absolutely, and uh, I have a feeling that, uh, well, not at this moment in time, but uh, I think does Eagle Costa play, um, he plays Enhanced Hammer, I'm pretty sure he does, um, but that could be quite uh, a big deal at this moment in time, because uh, that does start taking energy off the board from Tord's side, and as you can see, Tord is like really set up, he's, you know, waiting to go, he's got those Zoroarks, um, not only attacking, but, you know, drawing more cards, uh, Golisopod is doing, you know, its thing, it's, you know, waiting to go as well to do more damage, um, yeah, I mean, really, the main, one of the main benefits that Todd has is that his uh, his Pokemon um, are functioning off stage ones in exchange to a stage two, um, which makes it a little bit more efficient. 
Yeah, I think Todd has to uh, improve his trade game because he's again discarded the Bridget and draw into another one. Uh, well, the field blow was just the same. He discarded one and drew two more of them. So uh, trade's not working well for him so far. Um, he doesn't really care too much about it as he is dealing some righteous beating on the opposing Zorak mm. GX. 120 damage. Absolutely. And the thing is, at this point, oh, he's got max potion. That's big. Um, he needed that max potion to try and preserve that Zorowak. Um, he does have the double colored synergy in hand. He's just trying to work out um, how much damage he's going to be putting on uh, onto the uh, the opposing Zoroark in the in your opponent's active spot. Um, goes for a trade. Tries to draw in to see what he's got there. I uh, don't think there's anything too useful at this moment in time. There is the field blower if he wants to get rid of that choice band on the Galisopod on the bench. Uh, another trade. He's got a max potion which could be useful. Um, and another and a Professor Sycamore. Yeah, it, it's. No basic Pokemon, though, so he is kind of capped, and there's no choice band either, so he's kind of capped. Has he even used Feather Arrow? Yes, uh, used Feather Arrow on the benched Golisi part, but at the okay. same time, you can see, as you said, Righteous Beating only dealing 80 damage because he has no more access to another Rowlet or Zorua, so not working too well for Igor here, and Todd is really thinking just, how can I cement this commanding uh, position that I'm in right now, as he's trading in another Ultra Ball here. Todd's got Enhanced Hammer as well in his hand, that could be so crucial, given that um, Igor actually has two double color synergies prized, if he plays that Enhanced Hammer, which I'm sure he will, um, that could be quite crucial at this moment in time because Igor is going to need another um, double colors energy, and there's only one more in the deck. Yeah, oh, wow. So that is, um, that, that's one double colors, uh, double colors energy gone. There's only one more in the deck, but how many resources does he have to burn to find that double colors energy just to, you know, keep the, the, the pressure on the game and to stay within the game? And here we go, Acerola. We were talking about it. Todd's <laughs> deck is really strong in uh, really denying those price cuts on the opposing side. And here we go. Golisipod is going to be capable of dealing more damage in its own right. We know, though, Igor has one more turn at least uh, with the max potion that he can buy himself. Absolutely. And uh, that's, I guess, one of the benefits, if you like. You do have to force the energy discard with max potion. Given that there is no energy on that Zoroark, it's just pretty much like a free heal at this moment in time. So that's the kind of um, the one kind of shining light for Igor at this moment in time. But, I mean, crazier things have been done. Igor doesn't look in a great position. At, yes, as you can see, the max potion. Uh, Igor doesn't look in a great position, but we have seen uh, some pretty interesting and crazy comebacks. So, you know, don't count Igor uh, out just two yet. Yeah, Todd announced uh, first impression. There was a little of a bit of a debate how much damage it does. And Igor was <laughs> like, don't worry, buddy. <laughs> I got that max potion real quick here. <laughs> just showed him the max potion. It didn't even bother counting the, the, uh, the counters. Just pushed it straight all back off. So, uh, but yeah, um, as you can see, Igor is digging at this moment, and he needs that double color synergy. It's uh, pretty crucial. Has he got it? No. He did get the choice band, though. Um, but without the double colors, he is not really doing too much. Um, so there's a float stone. Um, at this moment, I think Igor is probably contemplating... Um, yeah, Phil Blow is a, a pretty smart play at this point. But Igor is probably considering putting up Decidueye and using its uh, GX attack, just because then he can recover things like Double Colors Energy, like Rowlets. Um, he's using N. Um, so yeah, that might be a very uh, a very solid play at this moment in time, just to try and recover resources that he doesn't actually have access to. Um, let's assume that he doesn't draw it um, with the N at this moment in time. It might even be his only option here. So six more cards he'll be able to see, and one of these he's hoping is going to be a Double let's Colors. See what he's got. He's got special charge in there. That's good. So at least something. However, remember, there's only one double colors in the discard pile. So it's not really uh, of a big help here. So he's more inclined to use the hollow hunt here. Uh, rescue stretcher getting some more resources. And in this case, it's routed. He's recovering it and putting it immediately onto the bench. Sure. And obviously the benefit of that is that he can now evolve that the next turn. Putting three cards into his hand is what he's going to do from the discard pile. Most likely the double colors is going to be among it. Um, let's see if he has announced that attack yet. No, I think, yeah, here we go. Sure. There's the Hollow Hunt GX for Igor. And now let's see what he's going for. Yeah, so it'll be very interesting to see what he is getting back. It's quite smart of him that he acknowledged that um, the special charge does put the uh, special energy back into the deck. Um, he really wants those special energy into his hand because he needs it for the following turn. So that's why he didn't play the special charge at this moment in time because, as you can see, um, that double colors energy is going straight back into his hand. Max Potion is a pretty solid play at this point because 
you know, he realizes that he's going to take some damage. So by having Max Potion in his hand, he can kind of reverse that. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the the last card is. Um, I can't remember if I saw a Decidueye in his hand. Is that why he's thinking to get the wreck handy? Yeah, not too sure about it. So it doesn't really add up for Igor. At the same time, interestingly enough, Igor uh, again decided against uh, playing the Feather Arrow and dealing some more damage on Todd's, uh, on Todd's side. Mm. So maybe, maybe just maybe he forgot about the Feather Arrows in this case. It's in any case not looking too well for Igor here. Absolutely. And uh, it's very, you know, uh, obviously we sit here from a commentary perspective, but when you are under the light, when you've got so much going on, you're thinking about so much, and obviously, you know, it... it some like small things like Feather Arrow does actually become, you know, you just completely slips your mind. And I'm very guilty of doing things like that myself. So it's not always, you know, when you are under the spotlight um, to remember every single intricate play. And uh, that could be one of the reasons why he's forgotten to put the, uh, the Feather Arrow damage on. Also for Igor, he looked a little bit, uh, think, yeah, really uh, <laughs> in his thought. So maybe he's even thinking about, is it worth thinking about scooping here? Yeah. So looking at the time, we only have 33 minutes minutes wow. left and Todd is expanding his lead with two puzzle of time here um, really interesting to see what he's going to take but Igor is not contem and is not giving up this game just yet but yeah. he's looking at the clock so maybe he's thinking about it at least absolutely and uh, as you can see Todd I mean if he just keeps spamming those double colors energy oh wow he's going for the Guzma as well and then retreating presumably uh, will be into either the Zoroark or the Golisopod which will knock out that Rowlet and oh, it's just such a, a commanding lead from Todd. Um, he really has, like, you know, full grip on this tie. You know, there goes the um, the Rowlet, which he is a, a shortage of at the moment. Um, and does he have... He has a rare candy in hand. Did he have the Decidui? Because that could have been a Decidui the following... I think he does. Oh, wow. That's a really, really... Big play there from Todd uh, to prevent him getting that second Decidui out. Yeah, Todd realized that um, additional damage from the Decidua is what could um, bring Igor back into the game and Todd is not allowing any of that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. There we see the fer feather arrow. Very good. Yeah, so he's got the feather arrow on here. Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to think. What has he got in his hand at the moment? What is he contemplating uh, could be the next, uh, the, the optimal play? He can continue using trade, uh, which I think he is doing. So he's going to be using trade. Um, so he's just discarding the Decidua because obviously he has no Rowlets left. Um, yeah, so it's... I mean, he does have the double colors energy in hand, which is good, uh, because he can now attack this turn. He has the option of Razor Leaf, which is uh, which he can attack with Decidueye. Um, and then he obviously has the option of the Riotous Beatings with Zoroark GX. Yeah, but still the numbers do not add up. It's still almost impossible for Igor to pick up a prize card here. Even if that Golisopod takes additional damage, we know that Todd recovered an Acer Roller just now with the Puzzle of Time. So what is Igor going to do? Yeah, so any damage that he puts on to, um, to this Golisopod, um, Todd will literally just play Acer Roller, put the whole thing back into his hand and reset the damage. And then Todd can then attack back onto the Zoroark. And that is effectively putting... Igor back one turn is giving him, you know, he's taken one step forward and two steps back at this point. Um, although, saying that, he does have the max, uh, the max potion in hand, which will be useful because Tord is going to use Enhanced Hammer to get rid of that double colors energy. Um, but then he needs another double colors energy to attack with. It's just amazing. Look at Todd. He even <laughs> He's drew so into in an control, enhanced isn't he? hammer. And he has two puzzle of time again. So he has access to his discard pile. There goes the enhanced hammer. And I think Igor is out of double colorless. So he has to use... Uh, the special charge again to even be able to attack. Yeah, and credit to Todd. I mean, he's played this um, so well, but not even just the way that he's playing this. Uh, his deck is just so well thought out. I mean, those puzzle of times are putting in a lot of work and the amount of Acer Rollers and, and Enhanced Hammers he's, uh, you know, reusing constantly time and time again. Yeah, so there goes the Acer Roller and uh, Tapu Lele, oh, sorry, Tapu Coco, uh, beg your pardon, becomes active. Uh, Wimpod goes down and there you go. There's a Golisopod ready for next turn. He can quite easily go into um, into Zoroark GX, which is going to hit the maximum um, 100 damage because it has five Pokemon on the bench. And yeah, so I mean, Igor does have Max Potion, which is going to help him out quite uh, significantly at this point. But how can he attack if he doesn't have any? Uh, oh, he's got Special Charge. Okay, so that will get two Pokemon. Uh, sorry, two um, Special Energy into which he only has one. Um, so I believe he has still got two special energy, um, two double colors in the deck. He has two, sorry, in his prizes and in his deck. So now he is just using Trey to try and dig for those uh, special energy. 
Yeah, and remember Robin's words in the interview. He said he has access to seven Acer Rollers. Tord now has another Acer Roller in hand. We know that Igor knows that. There's at least a double color, so Igor has something to work with. Mm. Has he got a Guzmo? Is that what he's thinking? Um, but even if he brings up something, I think actually a Guzmo would be a really good player at this point because it eliminates the threat of a potential Golisopod for next turn. Um, but, I mean, I don't think he has Guzma any outs to it. No, I don't think he does. He has Professor Sycamore in hand. It's going to be tough uh, playing that Professor Sycamore at this point, but he's attaching the double colors to the Decidueye. He used the Feather Arrow on the bench Wimpart. Now the Decidueye is becoming active wow. and is going to be dealing some damage to the Decidueye. Interestingly, he cho uh, chose not to use the Choice Band on the Decidueye. Mm. And uh, I think the... What's really good about Decidueye is it has uh, 240 HP, which, I mean, Zoroark and Golisopod just can't hit those numbers. Um, so given that it has so much HP, oh, there's the uh, Field Blower. Um, given that it has so much HP, it could withstand a few hits. Um, 90 damage could be significant, especially when you start adding up uh, the Feather Arrows. That's only two Feather Arrows from knocking out that... Oh, so yeah, Igor scoop. has just scooped and acknowledged that um, he's too far behind in this game. Again, because Igor is playing that stage two Decidueye, because it could take him a little while to get back into that game, I think it was probably the right time to scoop the game in attempt to try and get back into it and maybe even get a tie from this round. Yeah, Todd now up one in zero here in this clash of the Titans and Igor was looking at the clock quite often during the last couple of turns and he was thinking, okay, this is the time. If I want to make a comeback here, if I want to tie this match, maybe even win it, I have to scoop right now. There's no way for me to come back. Absolutely. And uh, depending on how long it takes for Igor to win this, um, I don't think that Igor can potentially win two games. I mean, I could be wrong. I very much hope that I am wrong. Um, but with a stage two deck like um, like Decidueye, I think it could be very, very tough for Igor to come back and win this uh, win this series 2-1. But nonetheless, he is still uh, very much so looking for that uh, one win, which, which, which would at least give him a tie at this moment in time. Yeah, I would love to uh, listen to the conversation that the two top players <laughs> and the judge, David Hochmann, have here right now. All the three players obviously being in... Uh, in the best of spirits here, they are, even if uh, either of them loses, are still very much in the run for uh, day number two. So there's every reason to be excited. Absolutely. And there's still so much to play for. They still have such a long way to go in this big event. And I mean, one loss at the moment is not really, you know, I mean, it is you know, a loss is a loss. But at the same time, there's still so much Pokemon to be played over the course of this weekend. So, I mean, if Igor can kind of get a tie out of this, I think that would be a good result for him at this moment in time. Given um, how accomplished, you know, Tord is and uh, how well thought out his deck is. I mean, it's such a, a fantastic deck that he has there with that uh, Golisopod, uh, the, sorry, the Golisopod and the Zoroark. I agree. I think he would take the draw at this point as the players are putting uh, up their price cards. The good news for Igor is only one <laughs> double color is priced this time, but yet again another Rowlet. Yeah, so there's a Rowlet in there. There's two Ultra Balls, so oh, there's a Tapu Lele in there as well. Um, it could, I mean, that his, what's in his, oh, he's, has the, uh, he has Ultra Ball in hand, which means that he can go into Tapu Lele, which I think he is going to. Uh, Tapu Lele, which will get him the Bridget. Uh, Bridget is not prized, so that means he will have access to getting those basic Pokemon out and into play. So that will be what he is looking for. He is looking at this point to do a deck check uh, or a deck search, try and work out what his prizes are. He only has the one double colors energy, as Julian was saying this time around. Um, and as you can see, he's making some very quick notes on a little notepad on the side of there. So just a little outside of the screen, you can see, which will kind of help him for the later game to remember things that he wants to remember early on. Yeah, Bridget is happening. And you can see on Todd's side in the price card, not all three Bridgets are priced. So for Todd, most likely Bridget is going to be happening as well. <laughs> it's going to be very unlikely likely for him to see any turn one without a Bridget. And <laughs> Igor uh, almost finished with um, his uh, checking the uh, deck here and he goes for Zora, it looks like, and the roller was priced. Anyway, so there's no Tapu Lele. I think he might even have one of them in his hand. Wow. Uh, so that might be, yeah, so he's gone for the, the one Zora, which has gone to the bench. He has the Rowlet. Um, Lily! Yeah, wow. I like that. So turn, turn one up to eight cards. Yeah, very strong turn one. Um, does Igor only play the one? Uh, Igor plays three Tapu Lele GX, so why has he... Well, he has a pretty decent setup uh, regardless, so maybe he didn't even need the Bridget at this point. Um, but those Decidueyes look like they're you know ready to go. 
I mean, this is the difference. Yeah, there's another Zoroa. Uh, just hit the bench there. This is the difference, uh, ladies and gentlemen, from going first to going second. Is that you can involve these big uh, these Pokemon into their their you know their final stages and really benefit from it. So obviously, you know, Igor will be looking to get Zoroax into play, and that will eventually feed out the deciduous. Oh, a puzzle of time from Todd. I don't like the sound of that. What is happening? Wow. It's Guzma. Todd no, hands completely he dry. He has not. <laughs> has he really got? Wow, I'm just trying to look what's in his hand. Um, That's it? He passes? No way, has he? Wow. And now Igor, look at Igor's face. It's changed completely. There's wow. the rare okay. candy. He has a Professor Sycamore choice band. He's got Sycamore. He could have game this turn. He could have... Wow. He's got DC in hand. Another rare candy. Another situation. Situ it's amazing. Wow. Dark okay. Tricks. Does he have... Oh, oh. It's 40 damage if Tor doesn't draw into something. Okay, so... Uh, Hello, Hunt coming out. Max Potions being recovered from Igor here. So and another Lily. Does he have Ultra Ball in hand? I believe he... Oh, okay. Ultra oh, Ball! Wow. <laughs> there we go. Puzzle of time. He Puzzle. knew the Ultra Ball was coming. And just in time. There we go. Checking his deck. And then Tapu Lele is going wow. to be giving him access to that bridge. It slams sure. it down. So that's why he played the Puzzle of Time in the first. Um, obviously, Puzzle of Time works in uh, in two. So, for example, you play two Puzzle of Time, and then you get two cards back from your discard pile. But in this case, Tord saved himself, uh, survived the turn <laughs> with that lone Mr. Mime active, and um, put that Ultra Ball at the top of his deck, so he knew that next turn he would be able to search out the Tapu Lele, which would get him the Bridget, and then go into the three basic Pokemon. <laughs> so this is going to be uh, exactly reverse of the first game now Igor's setup looks very much commanding and Todd is just trying to hang on here yeah it's it's such a it's amazing how this game you know changes so quickly you know you see so many dominant game ones and then game two um, can be you know very uh, the opposite if you like in this case and it, I really thought that Igor might have even had um, the game one um, this is going to be over very very soon Igor now finds himself the third decidui yeah and uh, he draws two from the from the lily is that Zorak? He's got Zorak so he can trade, which he's going to do. He's drawing two from trade. He's got Floatstone in hand. And even a Guzma. So what is he going to target? He could use it. He decides to go for the, uh, for the Feather Arrow, three of them even. And this means the double colors together with the Zora is going to be discarded. Igor picks up a price card. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's truly incredible how this changes so quickly. I mean, if this ends quick enough, uh, Igor might be um, inclined to go for that win. This could win. be it. There's nothing in Todd's hand. Wow. He could evolve his Wimper, but what is he going to do any good? Wow, he's got, he's got no cards in hand. He's he got nothing, the nothing. Attack. Right, so if Igor, Igor has got to end this quickly, because if he wants to get a best, if he wants to win this two, uh, two out of one, he has to start thinking about um, you know, wrapping up this up pretty quickly because he's still got... Uh, over oh, Tord's conceded. Wow. Well, that's, that's all he could do. Tord sees no scenario whatsoever to come <laughs> back against Igor. Igor picked up the steamroll here <laughs> and equalizes the game. Now it's game on. Best of three. Sure. And I take back everything I said. Igor has plenty of time now to try and grind out a, a win here. So it's tied at one apiece. And um, yeah, I mean, Igor could take this uh, two to one being one down Tord can take this to be two to one or again they could tie um, but obviously the benefits that Tord will have going first in this next game is that because he is going first he'll be able to evolve his Pokemon much quicker than Igor will be able to so um, we'll see how it plays out but it's very very exciting to say the least yeah the tale of two cities here unfolding in this very match and uh, not too often that we get to <laughs> see a match that can actually play out the best of three here on day one between th uh, these two great players but I think we have enough time on the clock just to make it uh, for the whole game and for the whole match to unfold. Absolutely. And it would be great if we could find a winner in this best of uh, three series. It would be great if someone came out on top. Um, obviously, from both players, I mean, Tord is what I would say. Tord did the right thing, I think. He scooped the game and thought, hey, you know what, I'm going, um, I'm going first in the, the last game or in the, in the third game of the series. You know, I will be able to evolve quicker. I'll have a much better hand. I'll probably have a much better chance of, you know, of getting a victory in this case. Whereas if he had tried to hang on for a bit longer, 
I mean, he might have topped into something, but he would have been so far behind that if he did eventually lose that game, um, he wouldn't have had time to make a comeback for the third game and we would have just ended in a tie. So I think Todd is evidently playing for the win here and did the right thing. It looks like all the players and even David are so happy about this <laughs> match. It's so exciting. And also for us, of course, uh, we're very uh, much excited that we have these amazing matches here on the stream as the game number three is about to start. Todd most likely going to decide to go first. We're going to see if he's going to find himself the Bridget yet again. Absolutely. And this is why you come to these big tournaments to play against the best players in the world. That's why we're here to see these players uh, compete. These are champions in their own right. You know? And we come here specifically to play against these players. And if you are observing, to watch them play and uh, to learn a lot from just not only just how they play, but also their decks as well. But uh, Tord is opening up here with uh, a double Zoroa. So uh, Mr. Mime on the bench. And uh, what is in his hand? Uh, is that a Tapu Lele GX? Yes, it is a Tapu Lele GX. So in this case, maybe even he is not going for the Bridget just because he has so many uh, Pokemon on the bench already and because his hand is so uh, dry, he might think N is the way to go and he's eyeing it out. Let me search for that uh, through that deck real quick here to understand what is priced. We can let you know there's a Bridget priced, uh, a Glycipod GX, nothing uh, too much worrying for Todd here. Yeah, so Todd has at the moment, he does have the one Bridget prize which i mean he plays three anyway um one goal isopod um nothing too much in there eagle has um eagle has the espion ex prize which we haven't seen over the course of the series he has the one tapu lele gx in their prize which um how many tapu lele gx's he runs three so that's fine so he does have access to another tapu lele gx considering he's just started with one um but otherwise not too much in there i think is worrying him um but yeah, Todd, as you say, uh, Julian made a very good point that he already has three Pokemon on the bench. So there's no point or kind of, you know, to get the maximum use of Bridget, you would need three spaces. So there's really no point at this moment in time, which is why he's gone with the N. There's the N and uh, Igor looks... Uh uh, also happy about that and sometimes you have these kind of hands where you're really hoping uh, you don't start your turn one <laughs> with that kind of hand that your opponent decides to go for the end. This might be one of those times. Absolutely and uh, sometimes the, the great thing about Pokemon is having that poker face. You know, sometimes when you think you, you look at your hand you think uh, oh, oh dear, my hand is really, really bad and then someone ends you and you're like, oh, you know, what a relief. Um, but Talk uh, about bad hands. Look at Igor's hand. He has a Professor Sigma but two double colors, not too much to be <laughs> working well, with here. He does have special charge in his deck which isn't prized which can get them back and of course he does have the Halo Hunt as well. I think at this point Igor just attaches to Tapu Lele GX and then just tries to energy drive and you know maybe just Sycamore that way but yeah not ideal uh, in the slightest you would have to say. Um, this looks to terrible. He decides to go for the float zone instead of the choice ban and discards it. <laughs> I like that when players are just discarding lots of cards and trying to hide them, but of course Todd picks them up and takes a look at the double colors that is discarded this way. Wow, Igor, he is not... <laughs> um, yeah, Igor has got... Uh, is that special charge? The last card in his hand, maybe? Um, I think I saw Ultra Ball as well. Yeah. Uh, oh, look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful for Todd here. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's... Um, Again, it looks it's like Todd is on the upper hand in this case. So two Zorak GX, that means he can trade twice this turn if he doesn't like his hand. He has an N, uh, at least as another double colorless, so at least 80 damage coming from his side, plus the choice band is 110 damage. So Todd now thinking about how can I expand um, this position here. He decides to go for another trade, not end. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, very, um, you know, you do have to make those things very clear that you say trade and then the end goes to the discard pile and that you're not playing that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but Tor just, you know, using his trades, he wants to maximize his bench here because, you know, oh, Ouch. there goes a double colors energy. And, uh, yeah, he wants to maximize his bench space here just because, um, you know, that Zoroark, does he have an, I don't believe he has a knockout this turn. So I think Igor is safe. So, I mean, that Zoroark will max out at 100 damage. Um, then obviously the choice band will put it to 130. Um, yeah, so 130. So, yeah, I don't believe he has a knockout. So Igor is safe for this turn. But, you know, he does need to start thinking about getting some Rowlets into play. Um, what does Igor draw here? Yeah, Rage uh, is beating now 110 damage. Oh, There's Bridget. The Bridget. It comes a little bit late for Igor, but better late than n not at all. And so now Igor finds himself too routed and Azora. Sure. And at this point, there's r not really much point in Igor um, conceding the game, just because at this point, you might as well at least try and play for the tie. Um, there is about 15 minutes left. Um, 
I don't believe the players are aware of what how long is left on the rounds. But uh, nonetheless, Igor is playing through his turn and trying to get into the best possible situation. And um, as I said, crazier things have happened in Pokemon. We've seen some uh, miraculous turn rounds before. Uh, so, you know, no one is ever really down and out, especially not as uh, early into the game as we are at the moment. Oh, no, not at all. 15 minutes left there until time is called. So Igor knows, he, uh, knows how quickly he won game number two. So these uh, situations can change uh, rather quickly. So he has another double colorless also in play. The special oh. charge recovers two of them. So in Very this nice. case, Igor is not too much uh, hurt by the enhanced hammer from Todd. Yeah, and so that's a very nice uh, play because those... Um those double colors energy go back into the deck, which means he has the option of hitting at least uh, one of the four double colors energies that he does have in the deck. There are no prize at the moment. Um, but uh, obviously Tor does have the enhanced hammer. Um, and well, he has the the, um, the puzzle of times, which can recover him the, enha the enhanced hammer. So he's always um, you know skeptical of uh, putting down. But uh, I guess at this point he kind of has to. Um, Tord is using trade again with Zoroark. Uh, he's just drawn two there. So there is a Zorak. I I think this is the difference between Tord's and Robin's decklist. At least that's what I the uh, one suppose. Mindjack Zorak. Yeah, I think there's the Mindjack Zorak. Tord is looking for another Zora to even um, maybe find himself another Zorak GX. He finds himself a Wimpod, the first one here, and I think he has a uh, Ultra Ball also, uh, two Guzma and another Acerola. So he could think about denying the prize card next turn. It looks like this is what he's going for. Yeah, and I think it's a smart play, um, trying to preserve as many. Um, you know, your opponent from taking as many prizes as possible. Um, I imagine he'll just go straight back into the Zoroark that is on the bench and then just go back to where he left off. And he's got two prizes here with that Tapu Lele being in the active spot. Oh, okay. ah, look at this. So Tapu Lele is going to be able to pull sure. off that drop as well. Yeah, so just uh, double colors on the Tapu Lele and he has the knockout, uh, which then preserves him, obviously, the Zoroark uh, GX on the bench. So a very smart play from Tord. Uh, just looking through his hand, trying to work out uh, what at the moment, you know, what does he want to do at this point? I don't. He's used the Acerola, um, he's used Trade as well, he's using Ultra Ball now. What he has like 30 cards in hand or so, so Todd can think about <laughs> all the options that he has. So here's the Ultra Ball. I would imagine there's another Zora coming down to this bench, and there we go. Sure, absolutely. And uh, obviously the more Zora you have in play, uh, the better your chances of drawing into those resources that you need, just because you can use trade more than once. Uh, in this case, will eventually be three times. So he'll be able to trade three times. So it's a plus six cards every turn, should Todd want to use that ability. Um, so yeah, he's just... Uh, at this moment, he's got the Zorak in hand, obviously, because he used the Acer Roller, so he has one for next turn, um, and obviously he just needs the, the next one after that. Um, but uh, he's got the knockout as well, so that is a knockout on Tapu Lele, which means that uh, Tord will take two prizes, um, and yeah... He's got one Golisopod in the prizes, which uh, is still in there. But uh, I don't think he really needs Golisopod that much at the moment. I think it's more of a luxury. The main focus at the moment is really on those Zoroarks. Yeah, so Todd now uh, thinks I can deny a prize card and at the same time pick two up. So this is why I play a Cirola in this case. And for Igor, again, look at this. It looks like it's his first turn. But it isn't, unfortunately, for him. Todd has uh, picked up two prize cards already and a very strong board. Now Todd is trying to recover, and it looks like a very strong turn. So he's made the optimal optimal um, result here from his hand by evolving the Sigui and the Dartrix. He finds himself also a Zorak GX, has another Zora in hand, and the Sigui ready to be evolved next turn. Absolutely. And uh, that was a very strong play on... Um on Igor's side because, I mean, he's gone from having uh, pretty much not too much on his side of the board to having a Decidueye and a Zoroark, and he's even got the Dartrix on there as well. The question is, what does he do? And obviously, just to remember that he does have the ability to use Feather Arrow. It is important to start using Feather Arrow now because you need to start racking up that damage. Um, let's see if he remembers to put on that Feather Arrow. Uh, he is thinking about it now, so he's contemplating... Um, <laughs> What's yeah. it going to be? <laughs> Todd is asking. So here we go. 20 damage on that wind part. Sure. And uh, actually, this um, this Tapu, does he have the double colors energy in hand? I doesn't know because that uh, flying flip might have actually been quite uh, a good play. Yeah, just he to start the, adding those uh, numbers. Grass energy on of the Dark yes, And he pardon. missed then again on the double colors energy. He might need it for next turn. Now, uh, Todd finds the Golisipod GX and it evolves it immediately. So that is not an easy target for an easy prize card anymore. Also, a field blower, but discarded with the trade, <laughs> which mm. he can use uh, <laughs> one more of. And it's just amazing. I, I love, I'm really, really enjoying watched, uh, watching Todd play this deck. 
just because he draws through everything he kind of needs. And he's like, yeah, I can discard that. I don't need it because I'll just get Puzzle of Time and just bring it all back anyway. So it's a real pleasure to kind of watch this deck sort of play out. Um, I mean, he's just... It's just amazing how much you know command, like how much control you can gain from playing this deck. Um, so yeah, he's going for the Ultra Ball. What will be his target? Which will be the Zoroark, of course it will be. Um, now he has the option of getting plus six cards every turn. Yeah, now I figured out how uh, Todd is playing free Bridget, so he has enough to trade in. So that's probably why he's playing the free Bridgets. Mm -hmm. Now Todd is uh, <laughs> shuffling back into. Yeah, it tr I tried to make a joke. <laughs> Didn't work out this time. So uh, Todd now. Um, has used his uh, trades. I think the third trade he can still use because he just uh, took the Zorak. He might discard yet another field blow as he's done before. There we go. Yeah. Trade. He has a Guzma double color synergy in hand. Uh, he's going Guzma on the Dartrix. It's a uh, smart play. Yeah, we've seen this one before. So Todd is trying to avoid as many Decidueyes as possible. And he sees the, the threat of a Decidueye coming up. So he wants nothing to, uh, not, doesn't want to have any of it. So Dartrix being knocked out by the first impression from Gulaisipat. Yeah, and it's amazing how easy Dartrix is to knock out in comparison to when you get a Decidueye out. So he's uh, acknowledged that threat very early on. And he's saying to himself, you know, if I knock this out, that means that's one Decidueye less for Igor. Um, so he's uh, made a conscious effort to do that, which I think is a very uh, very an intelligent play at this point in the game. And, I mean, you know, often a players don't like to go down to the odd number of prizes, just because usually that falls onto one prize, and then, you you know, after that, you might get end down to one. But, I mean, with three Zorox sitting on your bench, you know, that's really not an issue at this point. Yeah, and also the... Uh Double Colorless coming on to the Zorak GX, but at the same time, because Todd is always eyeing out the easy KOs, Igor is struggling to put enough Pokemon on the bench to scale up the damage from the Righteous Beating. So here's another Zora, but does he find himself a fifth Pokemon for the bench? I don't think so. No, it doesn't look like he, ha he has a uh, another Pokemon on the bench. It might be the case. He has, oh, he has Double Colorless Energy. Ugh, it's, it's tricky. Um, he does have... Okay, so he's going for it... Um, yeah, okay, so the Zorak does have a double color synergy on it, um, and he's just going for the rightest beating. 130 damage, so 150 now on the Golisopod GX here. There we go. But we know that Todd has uh, many AC rollers at his disposal, and I would be very, very surprised if he didn't find another one. Sure, not just AC rollers, but enhanced hammers as well. And uh, that is one puzzle at a time. Does he have the second one in hand? Um, to see if he can get some resources back. I know there is an Acer Roller in the discard pile there somewhere. I'm sure, I mean, he's going to use trade and uh, eventually try and dig something out. So, yeah, it's... Uh, okay, he has Guzma in hand as well. So he might even be thinking at this point, do I want to, like, maybe try and target some of the Zoroas? Um, because, you know, if he takes one prize on a Zoroa... Okay, he's going for trade again. Uh, oh, there's a second puzzle of time. So now he's probably considering, you know... I have access to an Acer Roller, which is in my discard pile. Okay, and he's got here's the, trade the last again. trade, double colors energy, and another time uh, puzzle of time here. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, again, oh, he's going for the field blow, which is removing the tools. Um, yeah, so he's probably thinking, do I want to go for the Acer Roller? Do I want to go for the Guzma? He's going for the Guzma um, to take a knockout. And this puts him in a very good standing, because actually, um, now he is only one EX or one GX uh, Pokemon away from winning the game because he's gone down to even prizes. So, a uh, very smart play there on Tord's side. Uh, let's just see what Igor can uh, conjure up here. Yeah, what can he do? Uh, he has double colorless in play, but at the same time, Tord is again doing a great job limiting the amount of Pokemon on Igor's field. So, Igor, without additional Decidueye, without more Pokemon on the bench, he's not dealing enough damage. And we know Tord is using Acerola over and over. Yeah, and, uh, and it's usually such a powerful card, because in this case, Igor is drawing six cards, Tord is drawing only two. Um, but, I mean, when you've got three Zoroaks in play, um, those Zoroaks are netting you a plus six cards, given that you have to discard one. So it's, you know, that's not really hurting Tord at this moment in time. And uh, as you can see, Tord is, looks like he's kind of hurrying up the play a little bit. I think he kind of realizes that time's kind of, you know, um, coming towards the end. And given that he's in such a commanding position, he won't want to lose this game. So he's going to try and play as quickly as possible to get that last KO on something like a uh, Decidueye or a Zoroark GX. Yeah, and here we go. Feather Arrow on the Grizzly part, so the damage is piling up there. So maybe Todd is looking for that Acerola play. At the same time, Righteous Beating is going to uh, dish out 110 damage on the active Zorak, so preparing for a 2-hit KO. Yeah, and um, I mean... Oh, there's no choice, man. I'm sorry. 
Oh, okay. And uh, I was going to say, Igor actually um, he could probably try and, um, you know, if he was playing for a tie at this moment in time, I think those max potions are pretty crucial. Uh, those max potions will be the uh, the one card that will prevent uh, Tord from being able to um, to take KOs on those EX uh, those big GX Pokemon like the Zoroark and the Decidueye. Or uh, what uh, Tord could do is, I mean, it could take a few hits to knock out those big GX Pokemon. In which case, uh, Eagle would have the option then to use Max Potion. But he is okay. And this was what I was saying actually is that he has access actually to knocking out those. Um, Knocking out those uh, those very small Pokemon like the Zoroas and the Tapu Kokos, um, which is what he's do, which is exactly what he's doing, um, you know, which means that Eagle won't have the option of using Max Potion because it will get knocked out uh, immediately. So, so it's a very very smart play on Tord's side. And again, if he does get end down to only one or two cards, he has those Zoroaks again to use trade. Yeah, Todd is putting himself in a situation where any Guzma is going to win him the game next turn. Not too sure how many Guzmas he's played, though. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, we can see one in the discard there, which is one he's just played. Maybe he's played two. I'm not too sure. Um, but and one more on the prize cards. Let's yeah. not forget about that one. Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, his last prize is the Guzma. There actually. we go. Let's see it. Let's there's have one, a look. two. Yeah, he's counting it out. Three. No, there's no more Guzma for Todd. Oh, wow. But he does have four Puzzle of Time, and I don't think... I. No, he has at least uh, two. Uh, I think he's got about two or three Puzzle of Time left in the deck. Um, so um, he might have access, even though the Guzmas are eyeing the discard pile, he might have access to getting some back with Puzzle of Time, which is might be which might be uh, what he's kind of thinking of at the moment. Let's see how many Puzzle of Time he has there. Can you see any Puzzle of Time as he's going through? Maybe. I didn't see too many, so maybe two, but I... I think, I can't even remember if he played it, so it's a very, very uh, exciting game here. So N limiting, uh, Igor knows that probably maybe <laughs> there are only few Guzmas left, if any at all. So an N play could limit Tord's hand size. He knows he can still use the trades, but he wants to make sure, please don't have any puzzle of time, because that would basically lose him the game. Exactly, yeah. So that's why he's playing the N. Um, obviously, you do get the benefits of playing uh, Zoroark, but, I mean, he's, uh, as Julian is saying, trying to give himself the best possible outcome he can to potentially getting a tie from this game. And uh, so it'll be very interesting to see what Tor draws with this one card. And then he'll be able to use the trades. And then, yeah, I mean, Igor has just got to keep spamming in at this point. It's oh, there's one, one of them. He's got one puzzle of time. Okay. So, um, if... Whatever that next card is, that's he has to then trade with whatever that next card is. That's exactly how I started Pokemon, right? right. Get one card, <laughs> trade that one in for two, trade one of them in, and that's how I get a massive collection. So Todd is trying to find that second puzzle of time. Sure. I mean, he can't afford to lose that puzzle of time. So whatever he draws from that top of the deck, he needs to... Um, use trade with it as uh, part of the cost to use trade and then draw two more cards and uh, obviously go from there. But, um, yeah, I mean, that unless, of course, that next card is a puzzle of time. But uh, as you say, those two puzzle of times will win him the game. Rescue stretcher coming from Igor. There's only one and a half minutes left on the clock, but it could all be over after that turn. There is a uh, feather arrow coming after the Zorak GX on the bench, picking up the KO here. The two prize cards for Igor. Now let's see what Todd is going to draw. Right. He's going to. He has to promote first. So what is he going to promote first? It will be the Zorak. Um, Okay, so he's got Zoroark. What is... He's got an in Okay, hammer. let's so trade that one in. He has to trade that in. He's going for trade. Oh, he's he gets got it. it. He's got it. And then throws it down. Extending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ego missing the handshake there. Playing a little bit with the Todd, but it doesn't matter. Todd is in such a good spirit. Wins the game 2-1 and one just in time. Absolutely. And uh, you can see the power of Puzzle of Time. Like how much it really uh, shaped up that game. You know, in the end... He ran out of resources to use what he needs to use, but then he used Puzzle of Time to get back those resources, kind of in a fashion like what VS Seeker used to do when people used to play that. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, a very, very good game and uh, very happy that we managed to witness that game between two fantastic players. Uh, just look at them. <laughs> they both look exhausted. I'm exhausted, Jamie. This was an amazing <laughs> match. It was, yeah. And uh, I mean, when you are in a game of this magnitude against these kind of players, um, you know, just trying to keep your eye on what they're doing, it really does take a lot of mental energy, I 